about a very very important concept of celestial astronomy I'm going to talk about celestial sphere how the celestial sphere is conceptualized how one has thought about a system like celestial sphere it is such a wonderful thing first of all we need to place everything that we see in the sky in the space in this concept called celestial sphere we know that earth is part of solar system our solar system is part of home galaxy called milky way like milky way there are numerous galaxies in the sky so how big is the sky how big is the space in my opinion space is so big that a human brain can do a lot of things but cannot imagine what is the size of space because we can imagine only a thing which starts somewhere and ends somewhere the space there is no ending so to give importance to such a big immense sized space they thought that the earth can volunteer to become the center so let us assume that everything that we see in the sky comes under this concept of celestial sphere we are going to talk about celestial sphere i am going to introduce you celestial sphere celestial sphere is a sphere of stars now we are trying to accommodate any star and every star that we can see in the celestial sphere when we say celestial sphere it is a sphere of immense size or sometimes they would go to the extent of saying it is a sphere of infinite size right in the beginning there is a contradictory statement infinite means having no finite limits and sphere means a finite size so that is how we describe the celestial sphere a sphere of infinite size a sphere a sphere of immense dimensions now why do we say sphere actually human eye beyond a certain distance particularly in the space cannot differentiate between the distances distance resolution is not there particularly for the stars moon which is 250000 miles away uh, sun which is 93 or 94 million miles away and stars which may be 40 or 50 or 100 light years away they appear equidistant and what is equidistant in three space locus of a point which describes same distance from the center so sphere is locus of a point which moves in such a way that it maintains the same distance from the center point in three dimensions so so if we see millions of stars we see sun and moon and we feel that they are equidistant from us that is what is the perception that is what we feel if we feel they are equidistant so they appear to be located on the inner concave of a sphere this giant sphere this large sphere called celestial sphere so in the concept of celestial sphere let us first understand that the distances are not important and that is the greatest thing which comes to our rescue when we want to do astronomical calculation distances are not important what is important is angles vertical angle for example a heavenly body what is the altitude above the horizon horizontal angles which means what is the angle with respect to first point of aries what is the angle with respect to greenwich meridian and so on so if we know horizontal angle with respect to a, a reference point or if we know vertical angle with respect to a plane we probably can have an almanac whereby we can represent the position of different heavenly bodies at any given moment of time this is how the bodies are represented if you look at the almanac SHA and declination of heavenly bodies is given or GHA and declination of heavenly bodies are given now when i have talked about the celestial sphere i must also talk to you about the projection we have to project the heavenly bodies on the celestial sphere and we have to project anything which is on the earth on the celestial sphere so to understand the projection part let us assume that this is the earth and here is the celestial sphere now moon which is so close to the earth sun which is uh, about 94 million miles from us and the stars which are so far that it is difficult 
to estimate their distances from us. How do we see all of them on the same celestial sphere? So what I suggest is you draw a line from the body to the center of the earth and this line of direction where it meets the celestial sphere is their projected position. So when we project the distances are not important. So we will add one more sentence to the definition of celestial sphere. Celestial sphere is a sphere of infinite size or immense size whose center is the earth or which is concentric with the earth and on the inner concave of which all the heavenly bodies are projected regardless of the actual distance from the earth. So moon which is so close is also on the same celestial sphere as the star and as the sun. So this is a celestial sphere. Now having said that while we have projected these bodies on the celestial sphere the point at which this direction line is meeting or cutting the surface of the earth is their respective geographical positions. So geographical position of the moon is over here, geographical position of the star is over here, geographical position of the sun is over here. So like the way we have projected all the heavenly bodies on the celestial sphere, we can project everything on the earth also on the celestial sphere. So for that I would ask you to take the picture of the observer from his front. If I ask you this is the observer whose photo I have taken. What is the latitude of this observer? Don't say it is pole. He is not on the pole. He is on the highest part of the earth. When you stand on Monkey Island, don't you think that the entire earth and sea and everything is below you? So I have taken a picture of the observer in such a way that he appears in the highest part of the earth. If I draw a line through the person where it meets the celestial sphere, is his zenith. So I'll call that point as observer's zenith. So let us understand the various terms in celestial astronomy one by one. Having understood celestial sphere and now the observer's zenith. So what we are doing is we are looking at the observer from front, from outside, from outside the universe, from outside the celestial sphere. And we look at the observer, a point vertically above the observer is his zenith. On the celestial sphere, if I want to find out the points which are exactly 90 degrees away from observer zenith, we will get a circle on celestial sphere, a great circle on celestial sphere, okay, and that is called observer's rational horizon. So this great circle is observer's rational horizon. So observer's rational horizon is a great circle on celestial sphere whose every point is 90 degrees away from observer's zenith. Now, this is like a dome which we are seeing from the side, okay? If I draw vertical stripes on this dome, if I draw vertical stripes on this dome, it is very easy to visualize. I'm looking at the celestial sphere from outside the space in such a way that I can see only the upper 50% of the dome, upper 50% of the celestial sphere, I'm looking from outside. And here it is a nice time to define the altitude of a heavenly body. It is the arc of celestial sphere. It is the arc of observer's vertical circle through the body. Altitude, true altitude of the star is the arc of observer's vertical circle through the body. Right? Between the body and observer's rational horizon or it is the equivalent angle measured at the center of the earth. And same way I can define true zenith distance as the arc of observer's vertical circle through the body, right, between the observer's zenith and the body. Now remember, while I was defining these things, did you notice that whenever I talked about zenith, whenever I talked about rational horizon, whenever I'm talking about observer's vertical circle, I am prefixing these terms by observer. Remember, if somebody while talking about the zenith, 
rationalize and vertical circle does not prefix them by observer his knowledge is to be doubted so in future remember whenever you talk about these three things you must prefix them by observer so I tell uh, my students that even if you don't have a penny in your pocket today I have made you millionaire even if you don't have anything with you any uh, materialistic thing with you you have your zenith in the sky that zenith is exclusively yours you have your own rational horizon a place does not have a zenith or rational horizon you have your own zenith you have your own rational horizon and you have millions and millions of vertical circles so please have that feeling when you study astronomy these three things are exclusively observers properties you will not utter them without talking about observer so now another way of looking at projection is assume that this earth that globe is made up of transparent material like glass or even more crystal clear than that there is a point source of light at the center of the earth when I switch on the light what happens when I switch on the light everything which is there everything which is there on the surface of the earth is projected on the celestial sphere so if this is a transparent globe and there is a point source of light at the center of the globe I switch on the light what will happen is everything on the surface of the earth is projected on the celestial sphere so geographical pole becomes celestial pole geographical meridian becomes celestial meridian observer becomes observer zenith equator becomes celestial equator or equinoctial and so on I'm curious in doing the calculation I'm curious in defining a few more terms so far what I have defined is celestial sphere observer zenith observer's rational horizon observer's vertical circle and true altitude and true zenith